In today's lecture, we're going to cover mitosis. I'd like to illustrate and help you understand the uh, different parts of the eukaryotic cell cycle. And then the next thing we're going to do is focus on how mitosis is different than meiosis. So let's focus on mitosis first, which is part of the eukaryotic cell cycle. So in bacteria, uh, cell division happens through a very, very simple process. And in other words, we have a single bacterial uh, chromosome, you see at the top, one circular piece of DNA. And there's an origin of replication on, on this chromosome. Uh, and basically what's going to happen is the origin of replication is going to cause the DNA to replicate. Uh, once the DNA replicates, then the cell starts to divide. And we end up with two bacterial cells that are identical to the first cell. Very simple process. Um, now, obviously, there's many, many, many steps, many protein players, things we're not going to go into. So it's hardly as simple as I am outlining here. But really, today I want to focus on eukaryotic cell division. Uh, so relative to eukaryotic cell division, the amount of time I gave bacterial cell division right here is probably appropriate in terms of complexity. Okay, so let's talk about the, um, uh, the results of cellular reproduction. And so really what I'm going to do is take this step by step. So the first time I talk about cell division on this slide, I'm going to make it extremely simple. So basically at the level you would explain it if you had like a younger sibling in grade school, you know, something like that. The next time I go through it, I'll go slightly more complex. Maybe the degree you would explain it to someone at a freshman high school uh, biology class. And then finally, I'll basically you know, do it at the level of a college course. But I want to start small and, and keep building and putting more detail in. So if we wanted to speak in its most simple form, we could say that this is what happens during cell division. You have a parent cell, and it divides into two daughter cells. If we look inside those cells and look at the DNA, what's happening is here we have one chromosome. Early on in cell division, that chromosome is duplicated. Now we have two copies of that chromosome. It's called, uh, they're called sister chromatids. And then those sister chromatids divide at some point when the parent cell divides into daughter cells. And once they divide, basically these things that were formerly sister chromatids now become their own chromosome. So this cell has one chromosome. This left cell has one chromosome, and this right cell has one chromosome. So the end products are exactly the same as the beginning products. Now one thing I really want to illustrate here is if we're looking at a human karyotype, what I just described to you, I did with one chromosome. So for example, it would be like if I highlighted this chromosome here. In reality, what you're seeing here done with this one chromosome is happening to 46 total chromosomes. So keep that in mind too, I'm simplifying the picture. Okay, now that level is obviously way too simplistic for our course, but now I want to add slightly to that. So if we look at cell division, again, we have a parent cell dividing into daughter cells, we'll see that there's three um, phases of cell division. So the first part is called interphase, the second part is mitosis, and the third part is cytokinesis. If we look into that further in this pie chart, we can divide these into further substages. So Interphase is by far the longest part of the cell cycle. Uh, this is relative to the amount of time it takes to go through each phase of the cell cycle. And interphase is divided into three different components. The first component is something called G1, or GAP1. And this is a period of cell growth before the DNA is uh, duplicated. The second subphase of interphase is called S phase, or synthesis. And this is where the DNA is duplicated. In other words, the chromosomes are replicated. The third subphase is something called G2 or GAP2. And this is the period after the DNA is duplicated where the cell prepares for division. You'll notice that throughout this whole cycle, so within interphase and these other phases we're about to talk about, you'll see things called checkpoints. And what these checkpoints are is think of them as like toll booths. If you're driving down the highway, you have to pay a toll before you proceed down the highway. Same thing here. As the cell's proceeding through the cell cycle, it encounters these checkpoints. And this one here in particular is a G1S checkpoint. There's other ones as well. And what happens is the cell basically says, is everything going correctly? Is everything being produced correctly? Are the chromosomes being replicated correctly? Is the cell preparing to divide correctly? If everything's okay, the cell pr proceeds through the cell cycle. If everything's not okay, then what happens is uh, the cell will basically either fix the problem or it will undergo something called cell suicide. In other words, it's called it undergoes apoptosis. Better to have a cell that dies than have a cell that's replicating incorrectly. Because if you have the latter, something that's replicating incorrectly, that is basically the definition of cancer. The second part of the cell cycle, or second stage, is called mitosis. And this is where the cell actually divides. 
So there's four phases of mitosis. There's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. We'll talk about those in a second. And then finally, the last part of the cell cycle is cytokinesis, uh, where the cytoplasm divides. You can see that over here, cytokinesis. And uh, honestly, some people incorporate this in with mitosis, but you know, if we want to be technical, it probably is its own little phase. Uh, this is the shortest by far of the cell cycle. It's just the point at which the cytoplasm is dividing apart, so where the membranes of the two parent cells pinch apart. And that's the cell cycle. This would be a nice little uh, you know, diagram you should be able to fill in based on the previous slide. Okay, let's look at the cell cycle in a bit more detail now. We're going to depict it with one chromosome. So remember, 40, uh, humans have 46 chromosomes, right, total, 23 pairs, 46 since there's two of each pair. I'm just doing the cell cycle with one chromosome here, but I want to follow through and, you know, basically show you how it works. So again, we have three main phases, right? We have interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis. In interphase, there's three substages, and what happens is, you know, G1, the cell's preparing for DNA replication. We have the DNA replicate, so here we have one chromosome. Here we have one chromosome, but this is one duplicated chromosome. If this was number three from the father, this would be number three from the father, and this would be the newly replicated, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> this is number three from the father. Both of these will be number three from the father. Uh, each of them will have half old material, half new material, but we'll get into that later on when we talk about DNA replication. And then finally, there's G2, or GAP2. The second phase of the cell cycle is mitosis. And what happens here is there's four phases of mitosis. There's prophase, there's metaphase, there's anaphase, and there's telophase. Prophase, what happens during this phase, and pro in Greek means before, so think of the order sort of like before, it's the first one, the DNA starts to condense here. So in interphase, we call DNA chromatin. Once it starts condensing or getting thicker, you know, uh, more compact, we call them chromosomes. So again, here you have one chromosome in the cell, DNA condenses, the nuclear membrane also starts to break down. In metaphase, and metaphase is the second phase, meta in Greek means after, so after prophase, you have this chromosome that's highly condensed and you have a single uh, chromosome in metaphase. So if this part is number three from the father, this part's also number three from the father. You can see the microtubules are latching on to the centromeres or the kinetochores on the centromere, if you want to be specific. Kinetochore is the name of the protein. And on the other end here, the microtubules are latching on to the centrioles. You'll see this dotted line here. This isn't a structure, but really what it is is something called the metaphase plate. It's the part on the chromosome where the, uh, excuse me, the part on the cell uh, where the chromosomes align. If there were extra chromosomes in this picture, there's only one, but if there are more, you'd see other X's aligned directly on this plate. The third phase is called anaphase of mitosis. And uh, ana in Greek means, I think it's ancient Greek perhaps, uh, is as time passes by. And I think of it this way, you know, you're having, seeing a process happen. In other words, in anaphase, the sister chromatids are pulled apart, and at this moment, they each become their own chromosome. So how many chromosomes are in this cell? This is the first point in which I would say there's not one, but now there's two, because the sister chromatids separated. Soon we'll reduce that number again, you'll see in a second, once the cell divides. Um, again, you have the centrioles, you have the microtubules latching on. After anaphase, the last phase of mitosis is telophase, and telo, or telos in Greek, means the end. You can see that now the nuclear membrane is starting to reform. The chromosomes, which are compact, are starting to get a little bit elongated, a little bit you know, uncompact. And the cytoplasm is starting to pinch off. So you're starting to go from one cell to two cells. Technically, in this picture, I would still say I have one cell, right, because the, the membrane is not pinched completely. And I would say I have two chromosomes in that one cell, because here's one chromosome, here's the other. If it's still one cell, I have two chromosomes. But finally, in cytokinesis, what happens is the plasma membrane pinches off completely, and now I have one cell with one chromosome here, and one cell with one chromosome here. And you can see the nuclear membrane is completely reformed. So if I started with one cell with one chromosome, now I have two cells, and each of them have one chromosome. I've completed the process of cell division. I'd like to go through the cell cycle here on these next few slides. I'll go a little more quickly now because these are all the bulleted points we just talked about. But I want to walk you through it a little more quickly and basically uh, show you some real images too. So here's some cartoon drawings, uh, but here's a real microscopy image. It shows you exactly what everything looks like here. Um, in blue, you'll see the DNA. Uh, you know, so that's sort of what we're going to focus on in these pictures. 
Okay, so this is prophase, again, the first uh, substage of mitosis. If you ask yourself how many chromosomes are in this cell, so go ahead and ask yourself that. The answer should be four. One, two, three, four. They're duplicated. I want to point another thing out. Each of the four is duplicated, and each of the four has a partner. So in other words, notice this blue X is the exact same size as this red X. So what's that saying? What that is saying is if this blue chromosome is, let's make up another number. If it's number five from the father, this red X is going to be the homologous pair. In other words, it's number five from the mother. Same thing here. If this is number seven from the father, or I should have mentioned the blue one here, right? If I stay consistent with the first example. If this is number seven from the father, then this would be number seven from the mother. Again, these are homologous pairs. Homologous means same numbered chromosome, but different source, different parent. You'll notice that sometimes we have things where uh, pictures divide uh, prophase and metaphase, and they come with like an intermediate phase between the two. So it's called prometaphase. Um, I would just stick with the main four, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. I just want to bring this to your attention. This does exist, though. So in prometaphase, we're somewhere between prophase and metaphase. Okay, now when we get to metaphase, you can see that all the chromosomes have lined up right along the metaphase plate. So we have four X's, or four chromosomes, lined up on the metaphase plate. The microtubules are latching out to the kinetochores on one side, which is on the centromere, and they're latching out to the centrioles on the other side. Finally, in anaphase, we have separation of the sister chromatids. So if we had four cells, excuse me, four chromosomes on the previous slide within the cell, now at this moment in time in anaphase, we have eight. In telophase, the uh, plasma membrane starts to divide. You can see that the cells, the chromosomes here are starting to condense again. And really, we're starting to end up with two cells. So it's still one right now, right? But eventually, we're headed towards, towards two cells after cytokinesis is complete. Each of the two cells, or each of these daughter cells, will be identical copies to the mother cell, or really, we say the parent cell that started this whole process. Interesting thing to look at here is you can ask yourself two questions about the DNA during cell division. You could say how many chromosomes are in each cell, which we've been doing that, right? This diagram sort of helps you do that. You can also say uh, how many strands of DNA are in each cell. The strand is the easy one, okay? The chromosomes is the one we went over that's slightly more difficult, but once you get a hang of it, it's not, a, not that big a deal. One thing I want to note here is this is a cell going through the cell cycle. This white row here is the, uh, the number of chromosomes per cell just listed, right? And then here, these are the number of DNA molecules per cell. And on this slide, they sort of divide this out. So they're saying either there's four, there's eight, or excuse me, four, zero, ah, say it again, zero, four, I'll get it right eventually, or eight. So they're saying how many DNA molecules, in other words, how many strands of DNA, zero, four, or eight. I'd like you to put a little bracket here. Let's put a little bracket like this. All right, actually move that bracket over here, right? A little bracket right here. Just to make sure you realize that this label here applies to this whole region here, 0 through 8. And then I think this makes more sense. Okay, so what it's saying is you have the same number of chromosomes, right? Even after replication occurs, for the reasons we talked about, you can have unduplicated and duplicated chromosomes. When we get to anaphase, that number uh, tentatively uh, or temporarily doubles, right? Once the cells divide, then the number goes back down again. So this 4 is actually referring to after cytokinesis is complete. Then it's back down to 4. This here is basically saying how many strands of DNA do you have? And you can see this is the easy question. A strand is just if it's a line, it's a strand. End of story. So you can see we have 444, four, four, but after DNA replication in S phase of interphase, then we jump up to 8. We stay at 8 strands, right, all the way until we finish cytokinesis. After we get separation, then we go back down to 4 strands. A few odds and ends to note here. So we're talking about cytokinesis. It happens very uh, differently in uh, animal cells and plant cells. This is cytokinesis in an animal cell. You can see that it's a pinching in, or we say an invagination of the membrane. It's called a cleavage furrow. And what it is, is it's a contractile uh, ring of microfilaments, specifically actin, uh, basically, you know, form here, and they pinch the membrane in until you get two daughter cells. They can do this because animal cells don't have a cell wall. Cytokinesis in plant cells looks a little different because you can't have this um, contraction of the membrane through pinching of actin because you have cell walls in plants, and these cell walls are very rigid. You're not going to be pinching these in. So what happens in plants uh, when you have cytokinesis, you have something called a cell plate that forms. 
It's basically the same thing as a cell wall, but until it separates the cells all the way, we call it a cell plate. Once it separates the cells all the way, then it would be a new cell wall. And so you'd have one cell here, one cell here. And that's what this picture is showing you right here. So quick uh, question here, reflect upon this. What stage of mitosis is this cell in? Well, you can see that this must be an animal cell. You have your cleavage furrow formed, the membrane starting to reform. So this would be telophase. This is a cell in telophase. This would be a nice little slide. Uh, I encourage you to, to print out this slide. Um, go ahead and look it over. Try to label every structure on the slide try to label every substage the cell is in on the slide. And then finally, try to figure out how many chromosomes are in each cell, and then also how many strands of DNA are in each cell. Finally, I'd like to go ahead and take a moment and just compare some differences between mitosis and meiosis. And the next lecture will be on meiosis. So if we compare the two, it's important to point out the similarities and the differences. Let's first talk about the similarities. If you've learned about mitosis and, and meiosis previously, you might have confused them to some degree because you might think, wow, these really look very similar. I'm sort of confused as what the difference is. And I can see that because on a very superficial level, and keep in mind this is superficial, right? On a very superficial level, they are the same, right? In the sense that uh, you have prophase, you have metaphase, you have anaphase, you have telophase. So th these names are the same in each of them, so it makes you think they're sort of similar or related or the same thing. But keep that in mind, that's only on a superficial level. Uh, if you were to leave this video saying mitosis and meiosis are the same thing, that would be a crime. Because <laughs> in reality, they're very, very, very different processes. Mitosis, the function of that is either sexual, excuse me, asexual reproduction or growth and repair. So in other words, your skin cells undergo mitosis. Uh, certain animals that reproduce asexually undergo mitosis. But the point of mitosis is you're producing, let's hop to the third bullet, you're producing clones, right? You're producing clones. Mitosis occurs in somatic cells, cells of the body, right? Skin cells uh, is a good example. Meiosis, on the other hand, the function is sexual reproduction to increase diversity. You're not producing clones. Let's hop to the third bullet. You're producing variable offspring. And then finally, meiosis happens in the germ cells. In other words, uh, this is what produces egg and sperm. It's not what produces skin cells. So you can see that although they look similar uh, at a surface level, mitosis and meiosis could not be any different.